First Citizens Bank buying a large chunk of Silicon Valley Bank. Around $72 billion of SVB's assets at a discount of $16.5 billion. Uh, joining us now is Frank Holding, chairman and CEO of First Citizens uh, Bank. And um, I'd like to say, wow, what an altruistic move, uh, Frank, and welcome. It's good to see you. But this could, uh, in, in a lot of crises, there's a lot of opportunity. Is that how you see this? Absolutely. This is a remarkable transaction in partnership with the FDIC that should instill confidence in our deposit system. And uh, it's, it's also a great example of where regulators and banks come together to protect depositors. I mean, you are very uh, fast growing. How many acquisitions has First Citizens done in, in the last five, 10 years, Frank? We've had a lot of experience in acquisitions. Our most recent acquisition uh, completed in early 2022 with CIT uh, gives us a lot of experience and a lot of background to handle this transaction, and we're excited about it. Look at the market. Did I guess uh, if you, you know, if you're going to do a market check, that's pretty good there. Almost uh, almost 25 percent. Um, should I feel like maybe regulators or the FDIC gave you too good a deal? <laughs> Well, uh, for those of you that are not aware of us, we've been through this before. We go through a competitive uh, process, bid process, uh, and we'd like to think that our competitive bid was not just a function of the, the quality of bid that we put and the competitiveness of it, but also the strength and stability and soundness and expertise that we bring to this transaction, which we think adds stability to, the, to our industry. Frank, you know, it did take two weeks, or more than two weeks, actually, to find a buyer for these assets. It, it's, it seems like a short time for an acquisition, but a very long time in a period of crisis like this. What, what did it take? What sort of assurances did you need before you felt comfortable with this, or was it simply a matter of price? Well, we want to recognize the FDIC for its leadership in this, in this type of transaction. This is a very challenging process, uh, but we think the outcome was great. Uh, for customers, associates, and for the entire banking system. Frank, the, the business that Silicon Valley uh, was in, I guess, you know, it, it's nice to just add all those. Uh, how, many, how many branches uh, are you adding? I guess you go from about the 30th largest bank to you'll be in the top 25 now. I don't know what the actual uh, number will be, but do you have any expertise in startups or the, the kind of business that, that SVB uh, was in? Are, are you comfortable serving that uh, arena? Well, at our core, we are a conservative relationship bank. And what we see at Silicon Valley is a real passion and commitment around their customer service. And we feel like we'll, have, we'll find much more in common here than not. Well, you know, uh, I know Silicon Valley Bank brings to us, uh, overlaps our strengths, in private banking, uh, wealth management, and small banking, uh, small business banking. Uh, what, we are what we look forward to learning and listening is their market expertise in, in serving the tech and venture market, right. and we'll be adding a lot of associates in that with, with that capability. But you're, this doesn't include SVB's private banking business. The feds are still looking for a buyer of that business. Is that just because you felt it was too overlapping, or were there other concerns about that business that made you decide you didn't want that too? Actually, it does include that. Uh, what we are leaving behind is the securities portfolio uh, that was a part of Silicon Valley Bank. 